Welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we dive into the stories and mysteries behind everyday things. Today's question comes from one of our curious viewers, Boomstick Bobby. Thanks for the suggestion, Bobby. You ask, how does the M18 Claymore mine work? If you've ever seen one of these little green rectangles, you probably wondered, is that a futuristic lunchbox, a Wi-Fi router, or something that turns people into confetti? Spoiler alert, it's option three. Let's break down how the Claymore mine actually works. Why it looks like a toy from the world's worst Christmas catalog. And why it proudly wears the words, front toward enemy. All that, right here on Explaining Everything. First things first, the M18 Claymore is not a medieval sword, despite sharing the same name. It's not going to swing through the air in a Highlander movie. Instead, it's a rectangular green plastic box about the size of a thick tablet. Imagine an iPad, but instead of streaming Netflix, it streams shrapnel. It weighs a little over three pounds, so light enough to carry, but heavy enough to ruin your whole day. On the front, in big, bold letters, it literally says, front toward enemy. That's not a suggestion. That's a life-saving instruction. If you put it the wrong way, you're basically signing up for the worst surprise party ever. And inside, roughly 700 steel balls packed in front of a slab of plastic explosive called Composition C4. Yes, C4, the same explosive that action movies love, except this one doesn't come in neat little Play-Doh bricks. The Claymore is like a deadly shotgun, except instead of being fired once, it just exists, waiting to spray a fan-shaped storm of steel marbles at anyone unlucky enough to be on the wrong side. So, how do you use this thing? Well, you don't just plop it on the ground like a lost lunchbox and walk away. The Claymore comes with little collapsible legs so it can stand proudly like the world's deadliest garden gnome. Soldiers stick it into the dirt, angle it toward where the bad guys are expected, and double check that friendly troops are definitely not in front of it. To aim it, there's even a little peep sight on top. That's right, a tiny sight as if you're lining up a shot with a Nerf blaster. Except instead of foam darts, you're unleashing a horizontal hailstorm. The effective range is about 50 meters for maximum bad day delivery, but the steel balls can keep flying way past that. So yeah, accuracy matters. Once it's set, the Claymore doesn't just go off on its own. It's usually wired to a firing device called an M57. This thing looks hilariously like a clunky old TV remote, but instead of changing the channel, it changes the number of people in front of you. Soldiers squeeze it. An electric current shoots down the wire, hits a blasting cap inside the claymore, and bam! Instant wall of steel. Now let's talk about what makes the claymore so infamous. When you push that little clicker, the blasting cap ignites the C4 explosive. The explosion launches those 700 steel balls forward in a 60-degree arc. Imagine a cone-shaped storm of supersonic BBs. At close range, it's like standing in front of a giant shotgun blast. At medium range, it's still not where you want to be unless your dream hobby is collecting embedded metal souvenirs. The balls don't just sprinkle out. They move at around 3,900 feet per second. That's about three times faster than a bullet from a handgun. Translation. 
If you're in front of one, you don't even get time to say, ouch. The genius of the claymore is that it directs all the explosive force forward. Unlike a grenade, which sprays in every direction like a chaotic party popper, the claymore is polite enough to say, I only hate that way. This makes it scarily efficient and much safer for the person deploying it, assuming they remembered which side is the front. Here's the thing. The claymore is more than just a weapon. It's a psychological terror device. Imagine being the poor soul sneaking through the woods, and suddenly you spot a little green box with front toward enemy printed on it in bold letters. That's not just hardware. That's psychological warfare. It's the mind's way of saying, yes, this is for you. And funny enough, that label wasn't even originally meant for the enemy. It was meant for the operator. Because some genius in testing realized soldiers occasionally put it backward. Turns out that's bad for everyone involved. So the label is less of a threat and more of a sticky note reminder. This side kills the other guys. Don't mess this up. The design is so simple and so effective that it hasn't really changed much since it was introduced in the 1950s. It's basically the frozen pizza of military gear. You don't reinvent it because it works exactly as advertised. It's terrifying, it's ingenious, and it's proof that sometimes the simplest instructions are also the most important. So the next time you see a Claymore in a movie or a video game, you'll know it's not just some random green rectangle. It's a carefully engineered, very unfriendly box that turns physics into confetti. If you learned something new, don't forget to like, subscribe, and don't worry, we promise to keep all sides of this channel pointed toward knowledge. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.